Here at What Culture Gaming, we appreciate a good simulator game because they allow you to recreate situations that you wouldn't usually get to experience in your daily life. At least that's the core principle. But sometimes game developers recreate something that's really quite strange. It might not be that purposeful. We're not saying it's good or bad, but we're just saying it's just that little bit bizarre. I'm Joe Hendry from What Culture Gaming, and today we're talking about the 10 most bizarre simulator games. In at number 10, it's Desert Bus. This game simulates the joyous task of driving 300 miles in a bus at a max speed of 45 miles per hour. Now, if you bring back some high school maths, you'll see that it takes the equivalent of a full working day to be able to complete this task and what's your reward for going through this pain well of course you get one point and it doesn't really mean or do anything you just get one point but what's most disturbing about this game is that someone actually took the time to amass 90 points the game was actually part of a collection for Penn and Teller's Sega CD game smoke and mirrors and it was designed as a satire on video game censorship in at number nine it's goat simulator and just because we said something was bizarre doesn't mean that it can't also be amazing and Goat Simulator manages to be both because this game involves just simple mass destruction of a town with you playing as a goat running around doing whatever you want with no purpose other than to amuse yourself by blowing everything up racking up points for your destruction and guess what it's sold over 2.5 million copies in at number eight it's Christmas Shopping Simulator because everything about Christmas is amazing except that last minute Christmas shopping it can be a real drag but game decided to encourage people to visit the store in real life by getting you to visit the store in a virtual world. Like the very first Grand Theft Auto game, you receive missions by approaching a public phone, but this time it's outside game, and it gets you to do some strange missions such as purchasing gifts for your family with 100% off, and instead of just simply giving them to your family, you drop them off at the grotto, which adds another stage of inconvenience. Not only that, they ask you to buy a new pair of XXL jeans from Wide Load, and don't ask why, just do it, it says. And also you've got to stop a thief from the famous PCs and pasties store. The game is ridiculous, but that's one aspect of it that I could get behind in real life. In at number seven, Deep Breath Drowning Simulator. Even mentioning this one gives me the heebie-jeebies, and this is an experience that I'd rather not repeat because I tried this game, and I use the term game loosely, when I played it at the Watt Culture office because I had to be rescued by my colleagues. It gets you to put on your earphones and stare at the screen, and it really does feel like you're going to die. It's like it's Matrix rules, where if you die in the game, you die in real life life. Not only does it have realistic sounds and sights, but it's kind enough to give you flashbacks of your family with terrifying noises as you sink deeper into the abyss. I looked around to see if there was a happy ending or, or if it was at all possible to even complete the game, but it turns out it's absolutely not. And the best outcome that you can hope for is your friend laughing at your death from the comfort of the boat. And guess what? It's all just a big advert for a yachtware manufacturer. Thanks very much. In at number six, it's Date anything simulator which I'm not really sure what's going on here still to this day because in the game you work in a coffee shop and you're required to make coffee for customers you're given a simple order you make coffees and you work at Starbox so it's really just more of a barista simulator but you eventually get a break you can go look outside but things get a little bit strange rather quickly you're given the chance to speak to some of the customers and even ask them out on a date if you want and if you decide to do so the game actually just calls you out there and then and says what are you doing with your life you're wasting your time playing this stupid ridiculous game do you not have anything better to do with your time throw this game away go do something in the real world in at number five it's waiting for the bus simulator and this is pretty much just exactly what you would expect from a waiting for the bus simulator game you have a bench there's a bus stop and you wait for the bus but there's a twist the bus doesn't actually come maybe this is a metaphor about our dystopian society and the disconnect between our dreams and the reality of our expectations or perhaps it's just a realistic simulation of british public transport either works for me in at number four is viscera cleanup detail because of all the things in this world that needs to be simulated, I'm pretty sure that cleaning isn't one of them. The player is tasked with cleaning up your base after an alien invasion, so you don't actually get to take part in any combat whatsoever. None of the action, just 
cleaning it up. But here's the bizarre part. This is actually quite a fun game. You're on a space station and you have to use various different tools to get your base exactly the way that it's supposed to be. And describing it doesn't sound like much fun, but once you get into it, this is actually a very addictive and enjoyable game. It's even got expansion packs, for God's sakes. They have found a way to make cleaning fun. And at number three, it's Simulator of a Simulator, which basically simulates you playing a simulator. It's exactly like Inception, but no great cast, amazing dialogue, gripping storyline, or stunning visuals. It's just you at a computer playing a simulator of, well, a simulator. In at number two, Traffic Simulator. And it involves you, yep, you guessed it, being stuck in virtual traffic. And it's perhaps worse than real life because at least in real life I can go nuts, I can crash my car off the road, I can abandon my vehicle. There's a whole host of things that I could do. But in this game, you can't touch the other cars. There's a Coca-Cola can on your dashboard, I guess, which you can't really do anything with. Oh, and the wheels don't move. There's no pedals. There's a phone you can't use. And the developers have made sure, carefully, that there's nothing that could even be considered as appealing or fun whatsoever. Good job. In at number one, Soda Drinker Pro. You would think, how could you possibly simulate drinking soda? Well, they've had a good go because you can simulate drinking soda across a hundred different levels. That's right, a hundred different levels, one of them being the beach and another one being drinking soda in a weird room. It really gets that exciting. But what's very strange about this game is that within the madness and insanity of drinking soda across a hundred levels, there's actually an even more bizarre game hidden within it. In the second level, if you find the hidden secret, you can be transported to a new game called Vivian Clark. Now, where to begin with this one? Because it's the game within the game, and it looks like a platformer that's a cross between Parappa the Rapper and Monty Python in terms of visuals, and it's without doubt one of the weirdest things I've ever seen, but I just can't look away. All in all, safe to say, Soda Drinker Pro, most bizarre simulator game ever, ever made. I've been Joe Hendry. If you want to follow me, it's at Joe. S. Hendry on Twitter. This has been What Culture Gaming. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. We hope you've enjoyed this video, and we shall see you next time.